Come on back everybody, we're going to talk about cutting tools for camping. Okay, so your first section is going to be your knife. It's going to be a good knife. Now, my theory is on pocket knives especially, you can use about any pocket knife you've got to do what you need for camping. I've tried it. It works. Um, one of my favorite go-tos, of course, is this right here. I just did a review on this. The Victor Knox One-Handed Trekker. Um, I'm all, I will say this though, on your blades, you don't want any smaller than that right there. That's probably a three and a half maybe. Uh, I don't have a tape measure. Oh yeah, I do. Hang on. I'll measure that. But that's the smallest you want to go blade wise. Uh, it's three and a quarter uh, inches long. That's probably the smallest you ever want to go with, with camping. Um, but, I mean, I can use that particular blade for feather sticks, whatever I need for processing small things, food, um, any of that right there. I can do it with that little knot, that little blade. Now, if you're on a budget and don't want to go after a big bushcraft style knife, which this is, this is below some of the good bushcraft knives, this is even further down. But for bang for your buck you're not gonna you can't pass the mora knives this is a mora companion i've had it for a long time i actually bought this paid 15 bucks for it at um, dave canterbury's pathfinder school um, actually at the pathfinder gathering he has once a year for a weekend where he lets anybody come in it's not taking the full class or anything uh, this thing is still freaking sharp. This one is the high carbon steel. I don't know if you'll be able to see that on there or not, but it is the high carbon steel. Uh, they do make these in a stainless. I just prefer a high carbon steel for ease of sharpening and stuff like that with this particular blade. But this thing's great for feather sticking, for preparing food, for whatever you need. Um, if you're on a budget and can't afford you know don't want to spend the money the 50 or so bucks for a swiss army go down and get a open l brand knife i'll flip in a picture right here of one i would say don't go any lower than a number eight maybe a number seven uh and then go your way up as far as blade length those would be awesome for preparing food for preparing your tender bundles and or tender and stuff feather sticking that kind of thing um, small thin blade that's perfect for that kind of stuff then you know if you want to spend a little more money and get something like a bushcraft knife highly recommend them um, this one thick blade it's a CFK cutlery company this one is a D2 tool steel um, so I keep it I keep the blade oiled with it too because uh, it's a high carbon mix in it now the good thing about the more knife and this knife you can uh, strike a, a ferro rod with these things with no problem with either the mora or the uh, cfk um, this is a thick blade as you'll see and it's a full tang now the mora is not a full tang knife and you're probably wondering okay some of you are new to knives and that that's you know let's explain that real quick the tang on this thing is probably just a piece of metal that's maybe ah uh, probably a little bit bigger than this allen wrench running through this handle and that's all it is um whereas this is a full piece of metal that you see running through the whole handle uh through the between the two handle pieces the whole spine is metal it's all one continuous piece of metal from the whole blade whereas this isn't so this might stand a chance if you're doing any kind of like um, it's something I do not prescribe to folks. If you got to, you got to. 
but if you're uh, batoning this might break so keep that in mind and be careful when you're doing that kind of stuff not to say this one wouldn't break be honest with you um, but shouldn't so that's it for cutting tools there's some others out there in the world you can use um, but this is some of your major ones and like I said there are nicer bushcraft knives that I do not have this is cutting tools getting you started. Okay, so the next cutting tool you might need camping would be an axe or a hatchet of some kind, some type. This is a little Gerber's um, pack axe is what it's called. Now, for some of you that don't know, Gerber axes are made by Fiskers. Same people that makes this one. I've had this one for quite some time. Um, I've used this quite a bit. What I like about this one is you can actually choke up on it pretty good and use it to make shavings uh, from a piece of wood. And I've done that before with this particular little hatchet. Uh, this is perfect to go in your backpack, go in your um, day hike bag. You've got a little something to process wood. The next thing, which I used, just got this here recently, used it on the last camping trip. Uh, it's the Fiskars X111, which is actually a 17-inch handle and uh, splitting axe. This particular sheath, and I'll leave links down below for this, is by a uh, Viking princess off of Etsy. She makes these uh, axe sheaths for the Fiskars. So if you're looking for one, get on Etsy. Like I said, I'll leave the link down below and uh, pick you one up because it's a whole lot better than that plastic thing they send on them uh, which plastic things better than nothing now you've got these two that are good for small stuff um, this you can probably split some small logs about that big around with with no problem but you start getting into some major stuff and you're going to want a full size axe now i won't use this axe eventually i'm going to get another fiskers full size uh, this is my dad's old axe, so I'm not, uh, I'm going to try to keep it intact, keep it one piece to give it to, uh, give it on down the road, as they say. So anyway, axes are a big thing. Um, do a lot with them, you know, cutting down trees, splitting wood. Um, that's pretty much it, actually. You do not, unless the back of these things are hardened. You do not want to use these as a hammer or a, uh, any kind of uh, um, striking as far as the back of them on hard surfaces. It will bend them. It will dent them. Um, they're just, you know, unless they've been heat treated to do so, they're not meant to do so. So just stop doing that and ruining them. All right, guys, we're going to move on to the next cutting tool and the last cutting tool you'll have to have. Okay, so the last cutting tool you'll need camping is some kind of saw. Um, if you've got one of these floating around, they work. You may have changed the blade out and get a better blade, but these things work. Um, I've had this thing, this is actually Dad's, and I've, I haven't used it in a long time, but I used to use it all the time uh, camping and stuff, cutting down, cutting down, uh, processing wood down. Uh, because one thing is for sure, when you're using an axe you're losing wood because of all the chunks you have to take out to get down to that splitting it in half whereas a saw you're only losing you know thousands of an inch instead of you know possible couple of three inches um so nothing wrong with these downside is most of them don't have anything to protect the blade all you have to do is take an old garden hose cut it to fit between here and here, split it so that this slides over the blade and protects you and the blade. The next one, now, you, this is kind of on the high end of things, but that's the Baco Laplander. Now, I've also got a Fiskars um, saw like this that I've used for years. I haven't had this, but maybe a couple of years now. And there's a couple other brands out there, you know, it's up to you what you want to spend on. But I will say this is a fast cutting a little um, saw. 
very fast cutting saw I like it a lot now one other thing you need for with all these tools and when you're even with your axes is a good pair of gloves uh, you don't have to use mechanic gloves if you can find some cheaper that are kind of like that that's fine too I like the mechanics gloves I got I keep a pair in the truck got a pair somewhere here in the garage and I've got this pair I always carry camping um, to have on me when I'm processing wood picking stuff up out of the woods and stuff it's always kind of nice to have a glove on because you never know what you might run into your finger so anyways that's it for the cutting tools for outdoors I um, hope this helps. If you have any questions, leave them down below. If you have any suggestions, leave them down below too. That's what this whole thing's about. Uh, one other thing before I go, high carbon steel stuff, always treat with some kind of oil. I usually use the Ballastol on it. Um, all my pocket knives, I use the KPL. That's the knife pivot lead on the pivot joints um, to keep them fresh and moving and, and keep the steel from rusting. So, with all that said, guys, I sure appreciate you watching. Make sure you check out all the links down below. I'll have several links for all this. And catch us next time and be prepared.